just bought this John Cooper Works Mini Cooper and I'm going to install the uh, extra headlamps on the grill so this video will document how I did that. So you need to order the lights and the installation kit so that comes with the lights, the covers, the brackets for the installation, various connectors, wiring harness, and uh, interior piece for the switch, some more hardware, and a, uh, I believe that's a, a relay. Um, you also get have to get a new uh, grill and a trim piece for the grill. You should get a copy of the uh, installation instructions. You can find them online and then download it. Okay, first thing I did was pry up the uh, this rubber weather stripping so that you can get at the footwell trim. After you've moved the trim to the side, the footwell module is exposed. You can remove the nut at the top and at the bottom and then uh, pull it out. There are three connectors to the footwell controller, one facing you, two on the opposite side. Uh, we need to remove these, so you have to uh, push on a release and then flip the lever over to pull them off and then we will be connecting wires to the two rear connectors. This is the M mini connector and if you'll notice the center slot is bigger. Looks like it was designed for a uh, thicker cable so I'm going to put the the uh, wire that's in the vehicle wiring harness in the center and then I'll put this wire into one of the side positions. Here are the two uh, wires in the M connector just before I close it. Okay, now I've got the footwell module out. There are two connectors here. Uh, this one is the one that we want to work with. It's got the gray insert. The other one has a black insert. And you can uh, pry up gently the uh, um, clips on the housing in order to slip this out. You don't really need to get this out except that you need to know which is pin 4. I couldn't figure it out without taking it apart. So pin 4, it starts the count from this end. And if you go up to the fourth pin, there's a wire there that's a larger gauge wire than the one that comes with the harness, but it's the same color, so it's a little bit of air proofing there. I've now got the M connector closed, and uh, if you have uh, xenon headlights, you'll just put this directly into that pin 4. Uh, but since mine doesn't, I'm going to cover this with electrical tape in case I upgrade to xenon headlights later. And I also uh, check continuity on this now that it's closed and made sure that I do have a good connection before I move on. Okay, so now I've got all of the connections made. These two small ones made to the one, the black inserted harness, and the larger one to the gray inserted harness. I made a mistake and put this one too close to the connector. It's still okay, it fits, but you'd better, you're better off putting them further up the harness here. And I checked continuity on all three. It was a pain in the neck checking the continuity on those little ones, but it all worked out. I connected the relay module to the harness, and then that'll need to be stuffed in here and tie wrapped somehow, but we uh, need to take care of the switch first so before we start putting this away. Next, you need to pop out this trim behind the steering wheel. There are some other instructions elsewhere. Lower the steering all the way. I used uh, this type of uh, tool to help pry it out of there carefully. Now you can get to the uh, upper screw that holds the uh, the knee protector in there with a Torx head screw. You have to pop this thing out. I used a screwdriver to help and then my fingers to get it the rest of the way. Then you can get your fingers in here and pull this thing out on the side. So there are three Torx screws holding this housing on here, here, one on the inside. Once you've removed all of those, then this thing will come out. I just moved this out of the way enough so I could get to the two torque screws that are holding the knee bolster on. This lower trim piece is held on with three torque screws in the bottom and then you can pull down gently at the top and the snap fittings will come out. Now I have this lower trim piece out and you can see the snap fittings and these things can fall out so watch out for that. Now with the air duct trim pushed to the side, you can get to the uh, knee bolster connections. There are two torque screws up high and then two below. 
So to route the wire uh, up to the switch, I decided to use fish tape. So, uh, but if you've got a, uh, a coat hanger, you could probably use that. It seemed easier than uh, trying to push the wire up. So I routed it from up here, down to uh, in here, and then I'll uh, attach the uh, connector for the switch with some tape and pull it up. I routed the wire for this switch connector through this hole. That seems to be what the hole is for, so I pulled it through there and now I can uh, connect the knee bolster switch. Key right about now is when you would like to not have anybody else around, so the girlfriend is out of town. My daughter's at Cedar Point, so I don't have anyone asking me why I've torn apart my brand new car. To get the wiring into the engine compartment down in here, you have to uh, pass through the firewall here and through another connection further back, which means that the only way you can get to all that is to take this thing off. So, And that means you have to take the wiper blades off, so we'll go ahead and get that done. One nice thing about working on a brand new car, the fasteners aren't all rusty yet, so it's easy to get this nut off. I used a puller to take off the wiper blade on the passenger side. Okay, I can't get my hand under here without um, taking off that wiper blade. Okay, this side I was able to get the blade off with a uh, vice grip, so it saves me having to take the hood off. Now with the cover off, uh, you can see that we've got space to work. This is the uh, master cylinder wiper linkage, and right underneath that this is the cover where the uh, wiring goes through the front of dash. So we're going to take this cover off and then we'll be able to get that wire through this. Okay, for this cap you can see you need to pry up the far side of that to, to get that to unlatch. I used a knife and uh, cut away the uh, electrical tape at the end of this and uh, so I'll replace that once I've routed the wire through this conduit. Okay, with help from a screwdriver stuff the screwdriver into that grommet there then I was able to get the fish tape in there so that I can reach it from the inside. You can see the fish tape that I've pulled down here so I'll uh, connect it to about halfway through the harness and pull the harness through. Now you can see I've pulled this cable through using the fish tape. Now we have to put the wire through into the engine compartment uh, in the same location where this red wire is entered. Now the loop's pulled into the engine compartment. Okay, now you can learn from my mistakes. I should have routed this through the grommet right here by cutting the end of that and route the wire through there instead of going through here. I was kind of hard on all the wiring to pull it through here, but it should work fine. Okay, next, I needed to um, take the fuse box out, which I've done that. I'm about to uh, disconnect that and flip it over. Of course, I've already disconnected the battery, which is located over here. Okay, the instructions that came with this thing are awful, but these brown wires here need to be connected to ground. So I just picked this screw down here, a uh, nut, underneath the fuse box. Okay, so now I've put the fuse box, secured it back down, and I've connected the red and blue wire here to the uh, power supply to the fuse box. Okay, you have to remove the four uh, pins along the top of the uh, radiator grill. So I use this tool to pry those out. Okay, I took the radiator cover off. At the bottom, it comes out this way. So you need to pull it forward gently. There are four clips that hold it in place. So you're supposed to uh, run the wire along the wiring harness in the engine compartment. I had trouble getting it to do that, so I resorted to fish tape again. So I ran the fish tape underneath there and uh, brought it back up here. So I'll hook that on the wire and then pull it through. For the driver's side, I stuck fish tape through this hole right here and, and uh, hooked on the wire to pull it through. So I decided to check and make sure this thing's working before I go any further. So I've reconnected the footwell module, those three connectors. And by the way, you have to have these levers all the way in the unlock position before you start pressing those in. And then, in the engine compartment, I've hooked up the headlights temporarily to the wiring, and I put a, a piece of uh, um, paper towel in between the uh, connections so that they don't short. 
and then I'll give it a try and make sure I get some power to these things. Okay, I want to check and see if these lights, if this whole system is functioning before I finish the installation. So you can turn on the ignition on the mini by with the manual transmission. Don't put your foot on the on the uh, clutch. Hit the start stop button with the key in place. Now the ignition is on, so we'll turn on the lights, go to the front, and check, and everything looks okay. So with that, I can uh, go ahead with the rest of the installation with confidence. Now I'm installing the brackets. Um, you can see the two fasteners that need to be removed here and here. And then you install the bracket along with new fasteners, and I've already done that on this side. So you can see the new bracket here with the two new fasteners. You have to use the new fasteners because they're a uh, different length to account for the thickness of the bracket. So where that wire exits the fuse box, it's standing up tall and it actually interferes with the uh, top for the fuse box. And you cannot get that wire underneath the uh, power supply to the fuse box. So I decided my best solution was to modify the top. I couldn't come up with a better way. Maybe somebody else can come up with something more clever. So I uh, put a slot in the corner of the fuse box to get it to fit that wire. These are the tools I use to modify the fuse box cover, tin snips, hacksaw, and rat tail file. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. So I can uh, get that wire to exit. Not that pretty, but it works. This is the lower trim piece that comes with your new grill. Uh, you, if you have a chrome uh, lower trim piece, you're going to want to pull that out and place it onto your new grill. Otherwise, you can go ahead and install this piece to your new grill and then uh, install the assembly. This is the old grill. The original grill is below and the new grill is above. And um, it looks like all they did was cut a normal grill. It's not a specially made grill. And you can see where it's been cut. So those of you who want to save a little bit of money could just modify this accordingly and uh, save yourself uh, buying a new grill. Okay, now it's time to remove this chrome strip from the bottom of the grill. So here's a latch right here, and this latch is uh, is now disconnected, but it, it was going um, up. The remaining latches in the center are all going down, so I've detached a few of these, and I still have to do the rest of it. I just pried on it gently with a screwdriver, and it seems to come out. I couldn't find any adhesive, even though they claim there's adhesive on here. So Okay, now I've got it off, and there's definitely no adhesive on this part, so it could be they didn't have their clips optimally designed before and they had to use adhesive, but they don't anymore. Okay, now the chrome trim is assembled to the new grill, and it was surprisingly easy to put that on. It fits very nicely, and I don't think it's necessary to put any extra adhesive on that. Okay, so they were right in the instructions. You have to leave this detached a little bit to leave some space so that you can snake those wires out in there and get them back in behind here. And then you can start these screws and get that roughed out before you press the grill all the way in. Okay, so you use these Allen head screws with a wave washer to uh, attach the headlights. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, that's the uh, inside. It's definitely easier to start with an Allen head socket. All you have to remember is that the brown wire goes to uh, connection number two and then the blade can go in either way as long as it's flat with respect to this side. Okay, I ended up tie wrapping the connector here um, and uh, it seems like it's got good clearance to this evaporator um, tube which is going to get kind of hot. So uh, anyway, and the hood clears it pretty well. I have the wire routing done in the engine compartment and like they said you just follow the uh, routing of the uh, uh, engine compartment wiring harness and that worked okay. Ran it along the uh, top of the radiator over toward the uh, passenger side. If there's anything that would have been nice is if there was another inch or two of wire to go to the passenger side light but in the end it worked f out fine. The footwell controller is now connected again and uh, it's now secured and all the wiring is, is uh, placed in the right location. I got the cover back on to the uh, harness where it 
goes through the firewall. I think it's important to get that cover back on. It looks like its function is to keep the harness away from these brake pipes. I'm going to put this cowl cover back on, but before I do that, I'll show you this is the driver's side cowl cover. The one clip that I broke was right here, so your challenge is to figure out how to get this thing off without breaking that clip. Got the cowl cover back on. Remember to uh, clip the windshield washer hose back in. Okay, we're putting the fasteners back on to the cowl. I had taken that one off right there, but you don't need to take that one off. And you got this plastic nut and then this bolt right here. Well, I goofed up and didn't keep track of which wiper blade was which, but the shorter one is the driver's side. To figure out how to get the wiper blades in the same position again, there might be a more scientific way to do it, but the way I did it was I looked for the witness marks on the windshield right at the end of the blade and then uh, put it back on with the spline in that position. Before I put this uh, lower interior trim piece back on, I'm double checking that all four of those clips are back in place. When I took off this side molding, I was surprised that that one clip stayed with the molding, but all the rest of them stayed with the body. So I got to pull those out from the body and put them back in the molding before I reassemble. All done with the assembly work, and there are just four fasteners left. These are the four that were used, that were disposed of, to put on those brackets for the headlights. So don't need these, so it all worked out. The vertical adjustment on the headlights is pretty straightforward by tightening the screws right here once you've got the, the uh, vertical adjustment right. But the horizontal is more difficult. There's an Allen head screw in here and uh, you can't get it at a straight shot without touching the bumper. So I used the Allen head and had to alternate back and forth. There's the finished product. Looks great. Took a few days to get it done, but it was worth it.